I mean, it's not perfect, but I think personally that's a lot better than it was. The police station in. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to another Wi-Fi Sheep Tech video with me, Tom. Now, today we're talking about BBC Micro again, and I've got to be honest with you, BBC Micro has something of an image problem. Not only in its um, aesthetic looks, but also its graphics modes. Now, the BBC Micro was a very capable graphics machine, but there was one element that seriously let it down. Let me show you. You see, believe it or not, what you're looking at here is the entire colour palette that a stock BBC Micro could actually produce. And although it was boasted as being a 16 colour machine, it was actually only capable of generating eight unique colours at any one time, and that included black and white. The additional eight were simply flashing colours. The colour choice was not brilliant, and you really were stuck with these, which meant all games, all graphics on the system had to use this particular colour palette. Yeah, so pretty limiting at best. Luckily, and due to the power of the internet and the brilliant homebrew community that still exists for the BBC Micro, I bought something rather cool off eBay. I've got it here. Let me show you this. Okay, so this is called a Video NULA. And effectively what it is, is a replacement graphics card for an original 8-bit BBC Micro. Here's the kit. Inside you get the card itself wrapped in an anti-static bag, a chip holder, a new EEPROM chip, and one of these little wire things, I forget what you call them, but it's a, um, almost like a pi slight GPIO pin on one side, and this little device that has a hook there we go, a little hook on it. The first thing to do is to print a very comprehensive and useful user's manual. Next we'll turn our attention to the actual machine. For this I'm using a BBC Micro Model B Issue 3. And the first thing we need to do is turn it upside down and undo the two screws on the underside. and the two screws on the rear of the machine. Before we turn the machine back over, and now we can simply lift the lid to clean off the computer. The next thing we need to do is to physically lift the keyboard off the computer as we need to access some ROM chips below. To do this, we simply turn the two nuts on both sides of the keyboard. And once they're undone, we disconnect the ribbon cable from the motherboard, like so. The keyboard will then come away, and then we just need to disconnect the speaker again from the motherboard. And there we go. Okay, so on the BBC Micro, Underneath the keyboard, you've got the ROMs or the EEPROMs. These are effectively uh, the way of ins physically installing system software, drivers, etc., into the machine. So the first two, I forget which way around these are, but the first two are the operating system and basic. The next one is the disk filing system uh, DFS for the floppy controller. And then because this has a MMC card, Fitted, which is important because the amount of disks uh, this new device is going to need we have the MMC driver fitted here for basic 2 so we actually have a spare slot and that's where we'll fit the uh, new driver software for the video card the ULA we need to take out or ULA sorry we need to take out I'm going to get this confused all day is underneath this heatsink now when I bought this machine the heatsink had actually come off and I never put any thermal paste back on, so all it's holding this on is a piece of double-sided tape. So it is simply the case. Got to take that straight off. There we go. And then it's this chip here, which we need to remove. Now I don't have any special tools for doing this, so 
I'm going to have to very carefully flathead screwdriver. The problem is here you've got um, resistors and things, so you don't want to uh, damage anything. Just try and sort of squeeze in. There we go. Actually, that's coming out not too bad. So we've not bent any. There we are. Not bent any pins, and there's the old ULA chip being removed. Okay, when installing an EEPROM, the chips will have a little notch on the top. You probably can't really see that on camera. There you go. You just made that out. It's a little notch just there, and that means it goes that way up, which is top. So be very, very careful. Try and fit this. I might have to get a pair of pliers and just yeah. What sometimes happens is that the uh, legs, you see that one, they're quite wide apart, so they're not actually going in the holes. So I'm just going to grab a pair of pliers. Again, you have to be so careful when doing this. And I'm just going to just tease these legs in. You see me doing that, just bend them in a little bit. Let's see if that's any better. Okay. And that's it, we're in. Okay, so now it's time to unpack our main video card board. And now I'm just going to check the manual just to see which way the board needs to be installed inside the Model B. Okay, so now we know which way this has to go around. We need to get the pins there to fit into the board here. I'm just a little worried about if that's going to get in the way. Let's have a look then. So I've got to be so careful to do this. Just going to check the other side. Make sure the pins have engaged correctly. Okay, uh, a little concerned about this uh, resistor here that's sort of stopping us from uh, putting the board in. So I've got the chip holder here, which came with the kit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this chip holder on top gives us a little bit of height and now I'm going to try fitting the board and I've got the uh, extender cable piece and we need to fit this onto here that goes on like that Okay, we need to refer to the manual guys. We need to figure out which pin on which chip we need to connect to. On the Model B, it's IC3 and it's pin number 37, which is the fourth down on the right hand side. There we go, it's just connect like so. Okay, with all the new ROMs and boards installed, we'll uh, reattach the keyboard, making sure to put the ribbon cable back in. Now the video NULA comes with quite a bit of software that needs to be downloaded onto either floppy disks or in this case I'm going to use a Turbo MMC flashcard system as it's a fair bit easier than writing a lot of disks. For this I'll take the SD card out or the MMC card out, put it into my Windows netbook. Here you can see the files that I've downloaded from the web address given, you see the manual there and each of these are separate disk drive images that need to be flashed to the SD card or it would have to be separate floppy disks if you didn't have a uh, flashcard storage system for your BBC Micro. So to do this I'm going to use the MMB Explorer. I'm going to open the file which should be, so we find it on the SD card, B MMB, there it is. So we open that and it will open all the disk images, there they all are. Easily, I think it's almost like 600 plus or something on the system. So we're just going to drag the files we want to one side, drag the MMB window to the other, find ourselves an empty disk slot and I'm going to simply drag and drop to start loading disk images onto the flashcard. And with all that let's turn it on 
and as you can see it's still alive and it's still generating a video signal that's good news okay so I've had a little play with the system now um, understand basically how it works there's an awful lot in this so uh, a definite follow-up video is going to be needed I'm having to record straight off a flat screen display because my video capture cards I don't think are going to be compatible with the analog RGB out uh, because the UHF and the composite output on this apparently according to manually it doesn't work properly with so I'll have to try that but just for now we'll shoot from uh, off the screen so just have to bear with me with that okay so if we want to implement a better colour palette, first of all, I'm going to show you one of my favourite games. It's just stock running, haven't changed any settings. So I've got the Turbo MMC loaded, so I shift break and we'll load straight into Turbo MMC, yeah. Turbo MMC rather. Let's just adjust that so you can see everything. Okay. So let's just flip through to where are we? Revs. Now you might remember me talking about revs in other videos. It's one of my favourite. Uh, racing games on the system so there we go refs okay so I'm just going to do a practice we'll say rear 15 front 30 space to begin Okay, so just make a note of the colours. This is just the standard stock uh, eight palette system for the BBC Micro. Oh, messed that up. We get the idea. Okay. So just now reset. So, because I installed the ROM, and I'm just looking at the uh, manual again, just to try and make sure I know what I'm doing. Okay, so because I installed the new um, video NULA ROM into the system, we can now call up some ROM commands. So if I now say ROM, and I'm going to type VNPL -E, so it's palette. Okay, uh, it gives us a list of uh, instructions. So I press space to continue, and this actually sets up a palette generator, which may look a little washed out on your monitor, but just bear with me with this. Okay, so if I now type L for load, it now asks what palette file I want to load. The ROM actually has a series of custom palettes with adjusted colours for existing games without needing to change the original game's code. And one of the games, luckily, is Revs. So if I simply type Revs, it now loads a new... See the palettes change? It loads a new custom palette in. So we can say yes, we'll take that. So Q to quit. Now I need to type card to get back to my MMC. Shift break. You'll notice the colours now changed on the MMC because it changes the colours of the entire system. So of course I could run any other game and it may look rather weird. But if we now go back to revs, which is what this palette set up for. I'll just do my same setup again. You now notice the colour palette is completely different. The game still plays absolutely fine. But they've now got a slightly better green. The steering wheel isn't red anymore. We've got brown inside the car. We've got various shades of grey going on. You notice that the colour has changed so it's not red on the um, corners anymore because we've got a grey now and actually it, it's a more of a sort of pastel tone palette which actually looks much better in my opinion anyway uh, 
I'm usually quite good at this and I'm just not very, I think it's because I'm trying to record me playing. Yeah, yeah. So I've not had to modify the game in any way, shape or form. I've just loaded it off MMC card. I could have loaded it off disc or even tape if I wanted to. Let's try again. I don't know if I've set this up very well. Anyway, you get the idea. So if we break, the color palette is still in active use with the computer. And even if I control break, which should be a system hard reset, it will still be there. What do I mean by that? Well, if I type mode two, and we just ask for the colors again, like we did at the start of the video. You'll notice that the palette is completely different. Oops. There's some flashing, but so this basically allows us to have custom color palettes to improve the look and enhance the final look of games. And also we can use this to write new programs. Okay, uh, one of the bug bearers for me, I'm just going to show you the game now, is the BBC Micro version of SimCity, which is on the original builds, which is actually a really playable game on the platform. But, as you'll see in a minute, it has a few issues. One being the colour palette is just appalling for it. Um, test build. So just look at this. It's just really, really sore on the eyes to look at for any length of time. I put some zones in, it's just like, no, really, really not doing it for me. So, with the new video card, I can hopefully remap the colour palette to make this a little bit easier on the eyes and, well, possibly playable. So what I'm going to do, I've got paper and pen, and I'm just going to make a note of what colours do what at the moment, and what I want to change them to. I think for this we'll keep black and white unchanged, but we'll change the others down. So, Okay, so now I've mapped my colours, let's um, bring up the utility. Now what I think I'm going to do is, if I bring up the utility for the palette in the ROM, I won't be able to save anything to the ROM, because it's read-only memory. So if I call the um, MMC card, I've got a copy of the tools I loaded on the disk image from earlier. I'm just trying to remember where those are now. Ah, oh, there we go. Right, here's the palette tool. So we're going to use the software version of the palette tool because we can actually read to this. So shift break in, again. Space to continue. Okay, so there's the colours. So I want to change my red to green which is colour one on the system so to change that to green I want to basically bring more green in and then we're going to take red out by holding shift and now I want to add a little bit of blue just to darken it down And there we go. So now we hit save. And I'm going to save the file as sim city. And that's now saved those colours. So now if I press break and we want to go back to din zero notice the color palette has changed so if we now zip through to SimCity let's see if that's any better city name let's say test build Okay, so 
the roads look like. Scroll onto the map. I mean, it's not perfect, but I think personally that's a lot better than it was. The police station in. Obviously, you could probably spend a little bit more time mapping colours to be a little bit better, but commercial zone, residential zone. Let's have a quick look what the menus look like. Yeah, they're not too bad. It's readable. Just I appreciate it's a little bit glary on the screen, but the budget budgets are all there. somewhere coal plant yeah it's all right I think you could probably adjust the colors a bit more but uh, that's actually now more palatable so every time I want to buy this I can bring up my color palette and yeah huge improvement so there we have it there is a brief introduction and demo of the brand new video NULA graphics card for the original 8-bit BBC Micro. There's loads more I want to do with this. I think the next step will be to change the board out from this and put it into a BBC Master 128, which will open up even more functions. I haven't even touched the surface of what this video card can do. So look out for the new video coming soon right here on the Wi-Fi Sheep channel. And as ever, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, you can uh, support the channel on Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.